Hi, I'm Dr. Brannick Riggs, Vice President of Education at doTERRA International, and I have with me today Dr. Alexandra Nietzsche, who's a part of our Scientific and Medical Education Committee. Alexandra, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. And you, Brannick? I'm good. Good to be with you today. So, Alexandra, the, the immune system is a really complex system. Can you help us understand it in maybe a more easy way? The immune system is a complex network of cells, organs, and also proteins who are defending our body against infection. Mm -hmm. We have in our environment around us a lot of bacteria, fungi, viruses, or parasites, and we are in contact with this environment every moment in our life because we are alive. So we have to breathe, we have to eat, we have to drink, we have to touch things with our skin. And then all these germs try to go in our body and try to grow there because it's nice for them there. And when they can grow, they can harm us, harm our metabolic system, they can harm our microbiome, they already could kill us. So we need a really good defense system against this and this is our immune system. Yeah, so it's amazing that the immune system has to balance between the environment that is potentially good for us, that we want on our skin, in our bodies, in our respiratory tract, those things that are helpful for us, and differentiate those from those things that can be problematic for us, that we could still get from the environment that could be causing us harm. So there's a couple of different sides of the immune system. Let's talk about that. What are the different sides of the immune system? We have the unspecific immunity and we have the specific immunity. So we have two sides with different types of immunity. So let's talk about the unspecific side for a moment. What is it and what does that do for us? Give us an example of an unspecific part of the immune system. Um, the unspecific immunity is also called our innate immunity. It's congenital. It's a really old defense system deep in our genes. Mm -hmm. And um, it reacts in with, uh, within minutes. So it's really fast and it acts with um, a barrier function. And in this barrier function involved is our skin, our mucosa, and um, also our gut. And if the germs can go through this barrier, then we have um, a second part. We have then a cellular immunity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so that innate part of the immune system is really that first line of defense, right? When we think of a castle, for instance, it's, okay, we've got a wall around the castle and it's meant to protect us. And then we have a secondary line of defense that when that wall is compromised, when something is coming in, now we have another way to get at it that's more specific towards the, the attacker, towards something that's attacking us, right? Of course. Let, let's talk about that for a minute. How does that work within that specific part of the immune system when we're looking at specific things, how does that work for us? Mm. Um, at first, in this unspecific way, we have uh, an army of immune cells like our um, leukocytes, our white uh, blood cells, or um, our natural killer cells, or also our, our macrophages. So we have a lot of cells working in the system. But we have also this specific uh, immunity, and in this specific immunity, we have an adaptive, and, but we have also a passive immunity, and they are really different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the adaptive, the adaptive immune system, let's talk about that, and then we'll go back to the passive immune system. Let's talk about that adaptive immune system. So now we have something that specifically has, has affected us. What is that? What is that part of the immune system doing for us? So this immune system is working a little bit like a computer. Mm -hmm. So we have now new information. This information are the, uh, the germs or the pathogens that uh, try to harm us. And now our adaptive system, um, this system is adapting our whole life. Um, is recognizing now that we have an enemy in our body and it forms um, antibodies and these antibodies are tailored specific to the antigens 
to this pathogens mm -hmm. and it's um, tailored to the mission. So we have this antibodies, uh, they mark the pathogens with little flags or like mm -hmm. little flags on it. So the uh, cells in the immune system who can destroy them, they, uh, they see them and can uh, go there like our T cells, the natural killer cells or also, um, um, or also other cells. We have in this system our um, B cells also and uh, it's really interesting that this adapting uh, part, um, what needs time, um, up to 14 days, when we have this antibodies um, in, in our system, then it's like a software update. Yeah. So the next time our body can react uh, faster. It's amazing to me that we have to be exposed to things for our system to get updated. So if there is something that is in uh, a completely different part of the world that I'm never exposed to, my immune system doesn't have an ability to react to that. But the things that are in my environment that I'm constantly exposed to, my system gets that update and is able to react very, very quickly to those things, right? It's pretty fascinating, but that computer doesn't start working right when we're born, does it? It takes some time. So this is where that other system comes in that we actually have some benefit from mom, right? Yes. So tell me about that. That's a really great example for the passive immune system because it's only borrowed. It's, it, it did not last for a long time, only for a few weeks or months. And this is a gift from um, the breast feeding. So mm -hmm. from the breast milk, from our mother to, um, from the mothers to the baby, because they give their own antibodies, their own immunity to the babies and can protect the babies for a short time. But this is really, really important. And then um, after this time, the babies can, uh, can learn themselves because then they are strong enough and uh, can build up their own immunity. Yeah, one more things that moms do for us, right? Yes. Is they give us their immunity, they give us life, and then they give us their immunity for a time until our systems are ready to start learning our environment and get that. I, I find that parents sometimes want to keep their children out of the environment because they're afraid that they'll get dirty or they'll get exposed to some things, but really Children need that exposure. They need to be playing in the dirt. They need to be playing outside. They need to be playing with other children so that they can, their computers can get those updates, right? Of and course. they can be better and better. I always say, you know, a child that that's, uh, gets uh, sick when they're young will be very healthy when they're old because their immune system gets that update very constantly. And so don't be too afraid of keeping our children out of those environments where their systems can learn. And the systems, they work together. Yeah. So uh, our um, antibodies from the adaptive system, they're activating our complement system in the unspecific innate system. Yeah. And this is so amazing that this, uh, this function or this, this types are working so perfectly together. So we have a really perfect defense system and we have to take care about it. Are there things that compromise the immune system? Are there things that we do uh, that can compromise that immune system of not performing optimally? Of course, a lot of things can compromise our immune system, like an unhealthy diet with um, a lack of diversity in our diet, a lack of sleep, um, stress can also influence our immune system because we release uh, glucocorticoid steroids and they inhibit uh, cytokines in our body. Um, the age, um, if we're getting older, then our immune system is not working so well than in younger ages. Also things like uh, toxins from outside and also nicotine, um, drugs and, uh, and alcohol can influence. Fear can influence our immune system. That's amazing. And emotions. Yeah, Emotions, right. that's right. Uh, and also diseases um, like immune suppression because of diseases or because of drugs um, could be a problem for our immune system. So we have to, we have to be pretty vigilant about having things that, that uh, don't negatively impact our immune system. What about things that support the immune system? Are there, are there things, activities, uh, lifestyles that support the immune system to help it respond you know, more appropriately? Of course, at first we have to avoid the 
things uh, that compromise our immune system. Maybe the harder part, right? <laughs> of course, <laughs> yes. And uh, we talk a little bit about the wellness chart. And if we have a look at the wellness chart, all these things are supporting our immune system, like our nutrition and digestion. We have to eat a healthy diet with a diversity of food. We have to go out in the, in the nature, um, moving there and uh, go out in the sun and sunlight is so important for our immune system because it influences it significantly because of the vitamin D. Mm -hmm. And 80 to 90 percent of the vitamin D is produced by our skin. But for this, we need sunlight or better UVB radiation. And the interesting thing is that we have cells in the immune system with um, so-called toll-like receptors. And these little receptors on the surface Phase of the cell, they um, are activated when we have enemies in our body. So when there is an infection, they will be activated and gives a signal to the immune cell. And then the cell is producing a precursor of vitamin D and new receptors for active vitamin D. And when we go out walking in the sun, in the forest outside, then the sun is converting this precursor vitamin D to an active vitamin D, and the active vitamin D can react with these receptors. And now these receptors are sending a new signal to the cell, and this cell will release now a new molecule, the catholicidine, and this molecule is a defense molecule for our skin. So we have a great uh, interaction and supporting for our immune system with sunlight. But also other steps from our wellness chart, like um, sleeping, resting, avoid stress, or only get positive stress, mm -hmm. <laughs> then um, not to get uh, toxic uh, substances in our body. Mm -hmm. um, these are really important and supporting uh, our immune system. Yeah, so that lifestyle wellness chart, yeah, really does support the immune system and helps us avoid those things that compromise the immune system, right? So what fuel does the immune system use? What are the things that the immune system burns through when it's activated? What things does it need? Um, it needs um, nutrition mm -hmm. like vitamin C and zinc. Mm -hmm. And these nutrition are different to vitamin D because they are vital, so they are essential. Um, we uh, can't make this nutrition ourselves in our bodies, so we have to take it with our food. Um, and or our diet um, uh, in us. And um, zinc, for example, is really, really important. We have more than three mil million children dying every year because they don't have um, enough food with zinc uh, in it. And zinc is a good supporter for the immune system. Zinc, uh, zinc can um, um, help release different hormones and enzymes for the RNA. Um, zinc is, um, uh, is a key, uh, has a key role in the metabolism from fat, proteins and uh, also uh, sugar. And zinc is also um, an important factor for the Im immune system because if the immune system is overacting, then zinc brings the immune system in balance mm -hmm. again. So I think this is also a really interesting uh, thing what zinc can do. And uh, vitamin C um, is also a vitamin we could get it so easily if we would eat fresh fruits um, every day. And vitamin C is great for our immune cells because it's protecting our cells from uh, oxidative stress. And vitamin C um, is, uh, has, a, has a function that it promotes the production from the white blood cells. And the white blood cells are also fighters in our immune system. And this is a really great supporting. And um, then I would like to talk about beta-glucan mm -hmm. because um, beta-glucan is a really smart thing. It's a yeast. And if we um, are eating this yeast, then um, we have this, it's, it's undigestible. So we get it in an undigestive form in our small intestine. And then um, 
cells like, um, like neutrophil granulocytes and macrophages came and the macrophages they tried to destroy it and with this destroying they activate the immune cells so like the neutrophil granulocytes yeah. and they are activated because of this work so if I have in the same time harmful germs in my body then the activation of the immune system is faster than in a normal way so so it's a trick to have a faster um, immune response um, when needed if I take a yeast like uh, the beta-glucan. So can you tell us, that's, that's fascinating and, and I appreciate that insight into the beta-glucan. I think it's a very important piece and the fact that the vitamin D, the vitamin C, the zinc are helpful not only in, in boosting and supporting the immune system but also, as you mentioned, keeping everything in check, in balance, because we don't want things to get too crazy in one direction, either underactive or overactive. Can you tell us about the new OnGuard chewable tablets that we have here? Um, yes, in this new Ongar tubal tablets, we have a few essential oils from the composition from the protective blend. Mm -hmm. We have the cinnamon leaf, the clove and the white orange inside. Mm -hmm. And the um, cinnamon leaf and the clove, we all know because of the eugenol. I love this ingredient mm -hmm. because um, the eugenol is such an anti, um, antibacterial um, thing uh, and it's, uh, it's great for supporting um, our health. And um, we have also this nutrition inside. So we have the vitamin C, the vitamin D, and also the beta glucan and zinc inside. Um, per serving, we have um, from zinc 13.3 uh, milligram, we have 600 international units vitamin D, we have 150 milligram vitamin C, and we have 33 milligram of the protective blend inside per serving. That means um, if we take three uh, chewable tablets per day. Yeah, I think that's pretty important to remember that a serving size is three, not one. And with those three, that's, those are the amounts that you get of those particular things. So, but we've got lots of OnGuard products, right? We've several out there. How do I choose one or several to use? How do I kind of differentiate between when's the time to use this product versus another product? So if my body has an acute issue, so if there are germs outside and bacteria and I feel my body needs support, mm -hmm. um, then I would take vitamin D, I would take vitamin C, I would take zinc, and in this case, like we mentioned before, the beta-glucan. Um, also um, the, the drops um, and also the soft gales. Mm -hmm. If I'm um, supporting my body only in the daily challenges, then I would say, um, all the products or the other products um, you can try to use or, or you can use them in your everyday lifestyle use. One of the things that we found in, in our family is that during the summer months when there aren't very many environmental threats, we'll take mainly, mainly just the beadlet every day. Um, but then during the winter months when things are a little bit more uh, uh, challenging, we'll go to the soft gel. And then if we have a specific challenge that we're addressing, then we reach for our on-guard chewables to kind of help boost everything a little bit more. If we know the immune system is activated against something, then it's time to say, all right, let me give it the fuel it needs to do its job. So how do I use this one? How do I use this particular product, the on-guard chewable tablets? So you can use it um, every day mm -hmm. or you can use it when you feel you need it. So I think it's, it's um, the matter how you would like to use yeah. it. So um, every day you would like to use it, you can try it out. I know for us that, that what we'll do in our home, particularly with our kids, is that when we have that immune challenge, when the system is being challenged, we'll all of a sudden start using this probably three times a day, three tablets, three times a day. Um, at other times, if I were to be using it every day as a, as a continual usage, maybe just three tablets total a day. Yes. That's kind of how yes. I That's it. totally enough. So is this product vegan friendly, gluten free, and free from sugar and artificial sweeteners? Yes, it is. Perfect. Good. It's, it's good to know that, of course, we trust doTERRA as a company. Of course, we, we know that it does a great job with developing its products, and this is no different than any of those. Um, that OnGuard chewable tablet has become 
a, a staple in our home. We always have it available for us during those, particularly as I said, during the winter months, but year round when, when there are issues because that immune system is constantly figuring out, as we talked about before, what is friend and what is not friend and trying to figure out what do we activate against and what do we do not activate against. And so we know that the On Guard Chewable Tablet has been incredibly helpful for us in our home. So thank you for your time today. Appreciate this. Thank you.